The Tayro Bridge was first talked about in the 1920s with the rise of the motor car. Prior to that and the construction of the rail bridge, all goods and people uh, crossed the river from Fife to Angus uh, using the, the train. But with the advent of the motor car, people started to think that they, they were looking for a little bit more freedom and the talk of a, a road bridge was becoming into the, the consciousness. A committee was formed, the Tayro Bridge Joint Committee, to explore the uh, funding possibilities and the, the actual engineering possibilities of actually crossing this uh, considerable estuarine water, which is uh, uh, one and a half miles wide at this point. Mm -hmm. William Fairhurst was the a civil engineer who d designed the bridge. He didn't actually have any formal education, uh, university education to become a civil engineer. He, he really started from the bottom as a draftsman and worked up. Worked very closely with William Logan from the Muir of Ord up, up in Inverness, um, who was a, a, a respected builder at the time, to come up with a plan. They couldn't go for a suspension bridge because the span was too great. Uh, at one and a half miles, 2.25 kilometres, it's just too great for a suspension bridge. So they decided with the, the ground conditions that they've got after doing borehole, exploratory boreholes, they've gone for simply supported columns with twin box girders. Mr Fairhurst, um, in order to maximise the efficiency of the structure, uh, he came up with the central walkway idea. Rather than having a walkway on the either side of the bridge, he put it up the middle. The benefit of that, he could maximise the, the structural um, um, space effectively to, 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 for the potential for the traffic. So he, he got a nice dual carriageway on either side of the bridge instead of a single carriageway, which they'd have had to do if they were going to go for a, a walkway on either side. What he's done is he's, he's, he's maximised the best use of space. So engineering in the 60s, recognising that the, the car use was going to go up and he, he future-proofed it and made it a dual carriageway. Superb. And the columns behind us are actually um, very um, aesthetically appealing as well. They're perfect for form and function. So engineering-wise, they're incredibly efficient and aesthetically they're very attractive too. If you look north to south, they taper from the bottom to the top. And if you look east to west, they taper in the other direction. So they taper from the top to the bottom. Um, and a lot of people don't actually recognise that, but um, Mr Ferris designed that to provide the perfect opportunity for, for the water and the wind to go past the structure with minimising the, the, the drag on the structure. With the fourth row bridge and the Tay Road bridge coming in roughly at the same time between 1964 and 1966, it opened up the whole of the Fife economy. You can see behind me that the, the, the traffic's constantly um, coming across. We get carried 28,000 vehicles a day and it just shows you how vital this transport infrastructure link is to this, this area. If the Tayro Bridge wasn't in place today, um, the trip from Dundee uh, round to the golf courses in Fife and to Edinburgh, you, you've got a detour of well over 50 miles and, uh, and up to an hour. So the, the, when, when this bridge is closes, for example, the whole of this east coast starts to grind to a halt effectively. It's a vital infrastructure link. And without civil engineers, that just wouldn't have been possible. They really are the unsung heroes. It's a fantastic um, a profession.